Hi, I'm Julie Smith-David at Arizona State University in the W.P. Carey School of Business. This is a short video to teach you how to draw Level 1 process models, which will document the scope of the supply chain. Specifically, we're going to focus on the SCORE model and identifying the key elements in the Level 1 diagrams. In order to be able to do this, you need a little bit of an overview about the Supply Chain Council and the Supply Chain Reference Model that they've developed. This is an industry standard for documenting supply chain operations, not just within one organization, but across organizations. And the methodology that they've produced has four different levels of detail, starting at the very highest level of detail at the top, where you identify the organizations within the supply chain, and then their key business processes, plan, source, make, deliver, and return. After you draw level one diagrams, you can drill into more detail, getting all the way down to a detailed process level. In this video, though, we're just going to focus on the level one diagrams, which are also called the thread diagrams. What you'll see in these diagrams is that you initially start with your focal firm, the firm that you're actually studying or in which you're working. But then you look at the whole supply chain, the scope of the entities that they influence or they interact with in order to produce value for their end customers. We're going to be looking at suppliers, and perhaps we'll have different types of suppliers within the supply chain. And then we'll also look at customers, and there can be many different types of customers, all the way down to the end consumers. So let me explain to you how we draw these diagrams. There's a number of elements that are embedded within them. First, you need to understand the process definitions for the five core management processes that organizations can perform. Now, not every organization will perform each of these, but basically companies really do much of the same thing. They source goods, they transform those goods into other goods by making something, and then they deliver their finished product to their customers downstream in the supply chain. Additionally, from a physical goods flow, they also are responsible frequently for the return of goods. And then the fifth process is planning, identifying and being able to determine what's the aggregate demand, how should we be supplying the goods, and the overall processes in order to make our source, make, deliver, and return processes all effective. In addition, there are organizations perform these key processes in many different ways. And so within the SCORE model, there's a convention where you put the S, M, D, or R uh, first, and then if you're going to identify a subset, a specific process, you could use one, two, three, or other alternatives. For the, the course of most activities, most organizations when they do this modeling, um, S1, for example, means source, of stocked products, the ones that you're going to keep on hand, the ones you're going to keep in the warehouse. If you said M2, then you'd be making make-to-order products. And so you can think of those as ones where you wait for your customer to place an order, and then you turn around and respond to that order and produce the products that they've created, that they've asked for. X3, or so that could be source, make, deliver, or return, would be of engineer-to-order products. And as you can tell, the, the processes for engineer-to-order environments would be very different for producing stocked goods. In the case of stocked goods, you know what it is you're producing, you produce it repetitively, you can predict more what demand is. With engineer-to-order products, you're working with customers on developing a whole new product, and then based on what their requirements are, going out and sourcing something you may have never done in the past. So it's important to keep in mind what type of products it is that are moving through the supply chain. Additionally, then you've got to understand how to plan for all of these activities. And so planning also um, can be identified with P's on all of the models, but then P2, for example, is the planning activity for your sourcing function trying to identify how you're going to source, when you're going to source. Um, deliver would be looking at the deliver planning would be looking at aggregating all of the demand so that you'll know how it is you can execute the demand. When you put these elements together, you can draw level one diagrams. And there's two techniques for doing that. This one shows being able to specify on a map the geographic locations of each of the um, facilities that are within the supply chain. The threaded diagram that I showed you earlier is what we're going to focus on, and this allows you to look at upstream and downstream, your suppliers and your customers, but doesn't necessarily require you to do the geospatial placing of those entities within the, a map. 
And so if you were to create a level one diagram, you've got to understand what's the scope of your company's business influence. How many tiers of suppliers upstream are you interested in working with? Do you need to work with? How many levels downstream are you going to be working? Once you've identified the scope, then you start drawing the diagram by making columns for each location. Within each location, you're going to specify the physical processes, the source, make, deliver, and return, linking those with solid lines, and then you'll add in the planning process. So let's do one together. Think about a vacuum manufacturer. A vacuum is actually a relatively complex device that's being used then by individuals, consumers in their homes. Well, the supply chain for a vacuum cleaner could be very complex. Uh, your suppliers, frequently the, the manufacturer, our focal company, the vacuum manufacturer, may just produce, may source components direct that could be used within their manufacturing process. So for example, the wind tunnel might be per purchased from a component supplier. The component suppliers buy raw materials further upstream in tier two, and we could continue going all the way back to the initial steel manufacturer. Downstream, we have choices of how we're going to distribute and get those vacuum cleaners to our customers. We may have a very complex downstream supply chain where we outsource warehousing, distribution, retail operations, all to get to our customers. When you're doing a level one diagram, you need to understand the supply chain and then just limit the supply chain scope to those entities over which you have some span of control. So the first thing you're going to do once you've considered and evaluated your supply chain and the scope is you're going to create columns for each of the entities, the locations within your supply chain, and organize those by upstream and downstream, as I've done here. When you've identified those locations, then you're going to add in the source, make, and deliver activities. And if you were doing a full evaluation, you'd also have the return. I'm omitting those for simplicity here. But in this case, the vacuum manufacturer has two physical locations, the factory, and they've decided to insource warehousing. Additionally, we've got within the scope component suppliers and package suppliers. And as you'll see in this diagram, we actually have different processes with interacting with each of those. So when the warehouse makes an order to the factory, the factory is going to make to order the vacuums that the warehouse has requested. And so we're going to source some components to order. So you see that we've got an S2, source to order, make to order products. We're also going to treat though differently the supplies. The packaging things such as the, the external boxes and the internal packaging for the vacuums are things that we stock in-house. They're more commodity items and so those are um, stocked items. So you see that within the factory there's actually two different types of sourcing, both sourcing of stocked products and sourcing of make-to-order. We use those products in our make-to-order process and then we deliver to order based on the requirements again that the warehouse has specified. You see that in the warehouse we're having stocked products. Everything there is being treated as stocked and similarly at the retail store they're stocking the goods. After we've identified the source, make, and deliver, then we're going to use solid arrows to show the physical goods flow throughout the supply chain, just linking together across the different entities. It should become really clear to you that a deliver from one entity is associated with the source of the entity that's downstream of it. After we've added in all of the physical activities, we're then going to add in the planning activities. And as we showed earlier, there's a number of different types of planning that can be performed. And for each physical process, you could actually have a planning activity associated with that physical process. I've added all of them here. Um, additionally, then, you're going to want to do some integrated, process, integrated planning across different processes. And so I've added in two key integrated planning processes. One is that the factory itself is going to interface between the warehouse and the component suppliers in order to be doing planning of their sourcing. So you see a higher level planning, a P1, which is really planning of planning. Similarly, the retail stores are going to work with the warehouse on identifying, aggregating the demand uh, within the retail stores and then working together with the warehouse to make sure that they can do their delivery of the goods that are required. 
The final thing that you're going to do when you draw a diagram is add a legend so that those who are not familiar with the score modeling techniques understand the source, make, deliver, plan, and return. They also understand what the ones, twos, threes, and four mean. And so you can see I've added a legend here. Usually that would go at the bottom, but because of the constraints with PowerPoint, I've put it at the top.